Well, hello everybody and welcome to Fire and Forte and welcome Lavinia D. Osborne, live from London. Hey everyone, what's up, what's up, what's up? Or is it uh, good day, good day? Good day. <laughs> Please do good day in a, in a London accent, that just sounds amazing. <laughs> good day, good day darlings. <laughs> That's so good. It's actually been a very lovely day in Sydney um, today, which is great because we've had some bad weather. So hopefully it's going to be a lovely day in London for you today. Um, but I'd like to really introduce you to, um, to the audience because I'm absolutely thrilled that you're joining Fire and Forte and talking to us today. So this is Lavinia D. Osborne. She is a pioneer in the blockchain space. And for me, she pretty much single-handedly helped me become obsessed with blockchain, Web3, Metaverse, etc. cetera, um, with the help of Albright, who invited, well, I saw um, a webinar that they were doing with you, and I attended a few of those, and I learned so much. I mean, it was early in the morning for you guys, but it was late at night for me, and I was in bed with my laptop, just so fascinated. And it was the way in which... Lavinia spoke through the topic in a really simple, direct, easy to understand way. In the chat, all of these women who were super keen on the topic, but slightly befuzzled by it as well, were adding loads of comments, adding loads of questions. And Lavinia was just answering them, firing back and making it so accessible to get into blockchain. So first of all, that's why I just Found, I've followed you ever since um, and I can see that you're an incredibly hardworking uh, woman so I'm not surprised that you're getting so much impact but to introduce you Lavinia is the founder of Women in Blockchain Talks which was founded in 2019 a grassroots organization pretty much I know you've got a team now but originally ran solely by Lavinia who educates and brings people women especially together to educate them in the blockchain space She's passionate about educating and enabling women to get involved in blockchain to help their financial freedom and their financial uh, access to, to blockchain. I probably won't do it as much justice as you, but I would certainly say that um, as soon as I came across you, I just thought she is fire and forte. It just, <laughs> it just feels as though you're completely doing your passion and completely working in your strength, um, educating women around this topic and bringing so many people together. And I'd just like to say that Lavinia is on a mission to get 50,000 women into blockchain. Um, by what year is that? Yeah, unless, oh, so September is my anniversary, so th three years this year. So we're hoping to hit that 50,000 by September next year. So we'll see. Excellent. OK, well, I'm hoping to bring some people on board as part of this conversation and our focus. So thank you so much for joining. I guess, would you like to tell us more about yourself and um, sure. talk to us about what you're doing in blockchain? Sure. Well, first of all, Hannah, thank you so much for putting together this podcast. You know, I think it's very important, particularly for women, um, that they embrace their 40s. 40s, turning 40 is so empowering. You know so much more about yourself because you've been with yourself for 40 years, you know? And, um, and also, I think it's really important that we celebrate women as we mature and, uh, uh, and evolve into our more aware self. I think that is the word I would say, aware self. And I think at this time in our life, some of us have, have, ch have had children. I don't have children. So that's a path that I'm still looking to go down at my grand age of 45 and 46 this year. And ultimately, um, I think at, in your 40s, you're just more aware of what you want and who, who you want to be around and what you want to stand for, more importantly. Um, so, yeah, thank you for putting this podcast together and celebrating people particularly women um, in their 40s, going into their 40s and over 40s, because I think it's very important. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> so with excellent. that being said, <laughs> um, so Women in Blockchain Talks is the UK's number one diversity-driven blockchain educational and networking platform. And the it was started simply to, not simply, but to put a spotlight on women in the space. Hence why we have the tag light, spotlighting a few creating space for all because 
Blockchain is a paradigm shift. It's not just a technology that underpins cryptocurrencies, NFTs, and the and the, the, the continuing growth of the blockchain ecosystem of which NFTs, uh, smart contracts, um, the metaverse, where point three zero is all part of. If blockchain isn't there, then none of this exists. Um, but ultimately, you know, we want more women to come into this space so we can lead from the front rather than chasing from behind. And like I said, blockchain is a technology, but there's something very ideology, ideological about the technology. It is about transparency. And in that transparency, it's removing the gatekeeper, decreasing the accessibility to the space, you know, let's just think about it from a financial point of view. Um, since finances is something that I'm very passionate about because data shows that most women will retire in poverty simply because of the gender pay gap. Um, and this is across the board. And so women will take more time off to look after children. They have more expenses because most women are single parents. Of course, men are single parents as well. And then, of course, you have same sex families. Um, but generally speaking, also, you know, the UN did a report on the pandemic and it was women who took on the bulk of childcare as well as leaving their jobs as well as doing a job and childcare. So, you know, at the end of the day, things have changed, things have improved, but fundamentally, when it comes to the sort of roles that the sexes have carried out over the years, women still carry that bulk and that has an effect on their income. So um, with that being said, you look at uh, cryptocurrencies um, and yes, of course, the market is down. And so I'm not advocating for anyone to go into space. I'm just giving an example that, with most financial vehicles in the centralized, in the traditional financial world, there's certain um, assets or vehicles that you can access at a certain price point. With blockchain and cryptocurrency, it doesn't matter what your price point is. If you've only got five pounds, if you've only got a hundred pounds, if you've got 10,000, it's still going to be the same interest rate that everybody gets across the board. That's called equity. And then in regards to that, when you think about blockchain and social impact issues, so we're looking at climate change, we're looking at financial equity, financial equality, gender equity, gender equality. When you think about those barriers being removed, that means more women, more diverse groups can come into the space. That's powerful once again. And so uh, many people people will miss out on this opportunity because I'll just think it's tech. Tech mm -hmm. is not for me. But ultimately, we live in a society where tech is fundamental to our everyday lives. So blockchain is just an evolution of the technology that is out there. And also it's creating a new economy called the ownership economy. And so, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go into that right now because, you know, I want to focus on the questions that Hannah has put together, but ultimately there is so much more to blockchain technology than most people give it credit to. Blockchain technology is not just cryptocurrencies, it is a movement. So if you are like, I don't know what I'm doing with my career, I don't know what to do with the skill sets and expertise that I have, how could I utilize it to, um, to move myself forward? And again, I think it's really important to say not everybody wants to leave from the front. Some people just wanna have a nice job, you know, have their home life, go in their holidays, and that's absolutely fine. But what I will say is that if someone comes to you and talks to you about blockchain and it's not for you, that's okay. But if it's for them, why don't you take the time to learn a little bit so you can support them? Because we always need support. And at the end of the day, we can't complain as a demographic about how this space is over masculine or it's not for us or it doesn't represent us if we're not going to have a voice and lend our voice to the movement. That's a fantastic um, explanation. And if you think about it, there's leading and th there's almost this business space, but everyone surely wants this independence when it gets to their finances. And I know that your background was in financial well-being, which I think is a really important term. So, so if you were not wanting to lead, like you said, if there was the motivation around financial independence, how do we in, include those people? Where can you start if you are not in the business space, not in the tech space, but really motivated by, I do want some financial independence. How do you begin that access? 
I would say, well, the first thing I would say is you join a community like Women in Blockchain Talks. Our objective is to create a safe, secure and supportive. Supportive is the key word here where you can come and ask questions. You can come and say, well, who's doing what and how are they doing it? A lot of people are like, oh, cryptocurrency, it's a scam. It has no future. It has a future. It's just an, it's a new uh, form of money. And money has always evolved over the years. And when you don't when you don't understand money, you don't have knowledge about the different vehicles, it disempowers you. This is why education is so fundamental to anything. It's fundamental to the blockchain space. It's fundamental to money because it empowers you. Once you have an idea or a level of education, then you can ask the questions to start improving upon it. So the point of what I'm saying here is that people can say cryptocurrency, it's a fad, it's not going to last, it's a scam. But let me tell you something. Cryptocurrencies has changed many people's lives who isn't a traditional demographic of, you know, people who are leading and creating and managing finances in the traditional world. But there's many women and also um, women from minority backgrounds. Um, so this was a report taken in America, but so Latina, um, Afro-Americans, and they said for them, getting involved with crypto, and this is a very important point here, they started to learn more about money than they had ever done before just by working. The thing is that most of us, and this is a majority, were taught how to earn money, go to school, get a good grades, get a good job, you make money, you earn money. But how many of us are actually taught how to invest money, mm-hmm. how to manage money? We're just not, right? Mm-hmm. So if a struggle, first of all, with our relationship with money, you know, because it's like what we have in our bank accounts is reflective of the value of who we are. But the truth of the matter is, is that we are valuable beings, full stop. The question, it, the question that really we have to ask ourselves is how do we take the value of who we are, who we are innately, and monetize it in a way um, that is beneficial to us and our growth? What do I mean by that? So again, we're taught how to earn. So most of us will go and get a job. And sometimes we'll stay in a job that pays us a very good money, provides us a good lifestyle, but we hate the job. You know, it doesn't stand with our values. It doesn't align with our values. You know, you're trying to get ahead. There's so many challenges that you have to deal with just to just, you know, get through the day. But it pays good money. And again, it gives you a certain lifestyle. So yes, you're exchanging your value um, bringing, you know, uh, expertise, qualifications, talents, etc., to the job, but you're not happy. And this is why many women are now turning to entrepreneurship. It's not easy. It's not an easy choice. And, you know, you really got to be strategic about how you uh, transfer from being an employed person into maybe investing and then maybe going self-employed or maybe, you know, starting your own business. Um, the demographics and the, not the demographics, but the stats and the data show that women are the fastest growing entrepreneurs in the UK and also in America, because it gives them a sense of, again, freedom. And um, there's another term, um, not authenticity, but um, ownership of your time, of your of what you want to give, et cetera, et cetera. And again, like I said, a lot of women are looking at blockchain and seeing how it aligns with that value, with that thought process, you know? Mm. And also because it's a, it's a new area, it's a new industry, they want to be able to take their niche and run with it. So joining a community um, is a great place to ask questions. And again, Twitter spaces, because, um, which is something that we run every Wednesday at 9 p.m. BST. And it's called creating, uh, spotlighting a few, creating a space for all. And we do that um, again so that we can have different voices because my voice is not the singular voice of blockchain or women in blockchain. And so you may listen, some, someone else may give an opinion of how they're learning and that will align more with you and your values and how you do things than the way that I do things. And um, But you can learn from so many people. Mm. And so it's about getting involved. And so what I would say, join a community, uh, join Twitter spaces, do your own research, D-Y-O-R. 
ask questions and then it's all about education 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 and start small you know investment or investing 101 is never invest more than you can afford to lose and it's the same with crypto excellent advice and i'm really hearing the evidence of a paradigm shift because when you talk about a paradigm shift it made me think that the way that i found out about money i mean i was credit cards and you know every opportunity and I just thought money was there to burn when I was younger and the very traditional saving account and then just one big goal of buying a house now all of that is you know none of that is necessarily wrong but it wasn't very diverse in terms of investment options or the knowledge that I get but when you talk about a paradigm shift is that also in the way that people access this information so whereas it might have been before from parents or from the banks that you just ultimately trusted is it more now about this kind of one-to-one any question you can ask when you talk about community that sounds like a much more relaxed informal way to find out about money yes definitely um I think that definitely the internet introduced the abilities of you know those financial blogs financial vlogs financial youtube channels but the question, the, the issue that most I came across when I was doing my uh, financial well-being consultancy business was that you can learn the information, but how do you implement it, right? What's the accessibility? You know, if you don't have £10,000 or if you don't have £20,000, you know, I hear so many stories they, um, of individuals who um, acquire an inheritance from a distant aunt or what have you, and the first thing they do is put a deposit down on a house. That's what they do because that they they can understand that process. It makes mm. sense. Bricks and mortar, it will go up in value, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But what if you don't have a distant aunt who's going to leave you 20,000? What if you've only got your job and maybe you've only got 50 pounds a month that you can invest into a, a vehicle, into a financial vehicle? 50 pounds in a savings account. Is going to do nothing for you. Most investments, um, traditionally, like I touched upon in the traditional market, it's probably going to be more than fifty pounds. Yes, you can do. Um, uh, they're called funds, where you can put fifty pounds a month into a fund, and then in that fund will be different assets that can go up. But as I touched, as I touched upon before, with cryptocurrency, if the interest rate is twenty percent in one month then your 50 pounds is going to go up by 20 or your assets is going to go up by 20%. If crypto drops, the whatever, because remember there's different crypto assets, there's Bitcoin, there's Ethereum, um, there's Card- um, ADA, there's Polkadot or DOT. So ultimately, depending on what the value of the, the crypto is, if it drops, then that means the value of your assets will also drop by that certain amount. But it's got nothing to do with the amount that you've put in. It's just dependent on crypto. For me, that that is more transparent and it's also more equitable, right? So, yes, there is a huge paradigm shift on how we're accessing information, how we receive information, because there's accessing it and receiving it, and how we engage with it. Mm-hmm. This is a key word here, engagement. Because sometimes people could give you information, but the way it's given to you, you can't receive it. It's just like... That went over my head. But then if someone, if you're part of a community and it's kind of fun and it's accessible and it's broken down in a way that you can understand, you are then going to engage with it. And if you then engage with it, what you're going to do is take action. I think as you were talking, I thought maybe it'd be a good idea for us to put some recommendations, which um, I'll I'll have a go at some of the ones that I've used, because I think there's a a bunch of people that will be what are the basics it's it I'm not too sure what this is and some resources to think what are the basics and then like you said some kind of communities but also groups that you can follow your twitter account you know block um, women in blockchain um talks twitter accounts etc and then there's almost this other area where you're talking about projects that are happening that are crypto based projects on web3 that then it starts to perhaps be an area that you think okay well what's the regular news story what are the updates on the projects um because there appears to be such a 
a wide range of knowledge there. I mean, have you got any idea about how many people, men and women, know about blockchain, get blockchain, are getting involved in it? Like, how evolved is the space, in your view? Um, it's 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 nascent. It's still so small. I mean, I think if you as an individual speak to your close network, your family and friends, your community about blockchain, I think that will give you the answer. Ultimately, mm. people will say, I've dabbled in crypto or I bought some Bitcoin and now it's gone down, you know, and that's what most people's experience is. But there is a difference between Bitcoin and blockchain. There's a difference between Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Yes, Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency, but there's hundreds of other cryptocurrencies. And so we call those other currencies altcoins, right? Because it's alternative coins, Bitcoin altcoins. So Bitcoin, of course, is a, grand, is a granddaddy. But to talk about resources, what I would say, well, first of all, I'm, I'm going to just say Women in Blockchain Talks, the website. I'm very, um, mm. I'm very active on LinkedIn. And then mm. on LinkedIn, we have a company page and we basically post every day different little bits of information because we also appreciate that you know people's attention span is quite small so we just like to introduce um uh, little nuggets of 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 keywords within the space so people can understand but if i was to say how to get started the first thing i would say is that we have a uh, ebook it's like what has blockchain got to do with me it gives an overview of what blockchain is um and you don't need to understand the technology but you should understand, it's like saying, um, what is the internet? Most people understand what the internet is. You log online, right? And so you don't need to understand what's under the, the, the hood with blockchain, but you do need to understand that it's the technology that underpins the metaverse, cryptocurrencies, bitcoins, altcoins. And in order for you to grow a business or to grow your assets, if business is not something that you're interest, interested in, blockchain needs to be there right and I, I like to give this an analogy so think of um blockchain as train tracks and then you've got these different platforms or these uh blockchain platforms like polkadot like uh cardano like bitcoin like ethereum and there's so much to say in all that and some people are going to talk about how is it affecting the climate and the, the the carbon emissions and yes there's lots of issues around that but there are very bright minds creating solutions as well so that's all i'm going to say in regards to the carbon emissions and climate impact and all of that but so let's go back to the analogy the train tracks is blockchain technology the trains we've got you know there's there's we've got uh southeastern southwestern we've got um the the, the euro train for example do you know what i mean so there's different and i'm sure you have the same in australia or in your part of the world wherever you're watching this from and so Let's just say we've got South, Southwestern, we're going to call that Bitcoin. Southeastern, we're going to call that Cardano, right? And the Euro one, we're going to call Polkadot. So all of these trains are running on the same uh, train tracks, right? And then inside of the train tracks, you've got stuff like pictures, an NFT picture. You've got audios, which is an audio NFT. NFT is non-fungible tokens, and it's part of the, the ecosystem. And then you've also got gold bars, and the gold bars represents the tokens and the, and the coins, yes, yeah? so the cryptocurrencies. And so um, within these trains, these, uh, these trains, you have all of these assets, but of course, the train can't run if there's no tracks. So blockchain, train tracks, the train is the different platforms or the branded trains are the different platforms. And then inside of the trains, you have the different assets that you're creating on the blockchain platforms, which are the train brands. Does that make sense? That is very, a very helpful definition um, because I've seen so many illustrations of blockchain technology and you see this kind of chain, don't you? But actually applying it and realizing that's how all of these other areas that relates to it, non NFTs, finances, et cetera, run off it. Great analogy. That's brilliant. 
Yeah. That's awesome. And outside of investing, how how will blockchain and Web3, so it might be nascent now, but um, what's it going to look like in five years, do you think? How's it going to impact people's lives? Um, I think that most, I think we'll get to a place because it is very convoluted at the moment. I mean, when I first started back in 2017, 2016, 2017 more so, but yeah, oh my gosh, it was like it, the, the accessibility was not that great and now there are you know through coinbase for example it is easier to access um to create an account and then to access crypto and hold crypto right and sell crypto so it has improved for sure but it still needs to improve you know the ux is still not there um and a lot of people the reason why i called my ebook what has blockchain got to do with me because most people are like well what has blockchain got to do with me you know um so to answer your question, I think that the technology, maybe we won't talk so much about the technology. If you think about the internet, do we talk about SMPs and how the emails work? We don't, you know, we don't talk about that. We're just like, I'm going to send an email or I'm going to start a business on the internet. And that's how, I don't think it will be five years though. I think there's a, still a lot of building and also around cryptocurrencies and NFTs, anything that's to do with the monetary system, we need regulation because there's a lot of scammers out there. Now, it sounds like an oxymoron to say that we need regulation because I totally believe in decentralization because decentralization is about removing that middleman, it's about removing that central figure, it's about removing that gatekeeper, which for me means there's more equity, there's more accessibility to people who look like me and, and what, what have you, right? Um, different demographics across the world. However, there are also bad actors and we have to create a safe space for those people who want to do good in this space, mm. right? So we do, never, we do need regulation and we do need legislation and we do need a way where if we're scammed or if, you know, um, yeah, if we're scammed, that we, there's some sort of recourse. It's not just a, a, a paradigm shift, it's a disruptor. It's disrupting mm. the financial industry hugely. It is disrupting the supply chain industry hugely, right? So ultimately, um, what I just see and what I what I hope to see is more equity, to see more leaders building in this space from different diverse groups, not just the same demographics, you know. And ultimately, those demographics, you know, and I'm talking yes, I'm talking about white male middle class, you know, well connected, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, because they have the networks, they have the funds. If you look at the Board A Club, um, which is a huge NFT project, you know, most of the people who are behind that project look a certain way, you know? So, um, and then most of the people who were, who, who came in at the beginning and later on, they look a certain way. So, you know, money will, money always moves. That's the thing about, there's a reason why money is called a currency, because it's a it's like a current it moves it exchanges the question is within this paradigm shift of blockchain how does the money move so it gets into the hands of more people an evolution yeah i, I feel as though there's a real combination here between actually when we talk about fire um I, I, that being about a, a passion but also forte is about bravery and when you're talking about getting into this space it's almost not waiting for it to happen in the way that everything else has happened because that doesn't help anybody so it, the, there's almost an element of self um, responsibility to get involved but then how have you got any advice or things that are working in in terms of making it more diverse across all walks of um, all walks of people, all demographics? Because I certainly think, OK, this is about self-responsibility and finding out about it. But I was lucky enough to be aware of Albright and be able to attend one of those. How does increasing that diversity look like? Sure. So I just want to touch on your question about, uh, not question, but your statement about Forte. I love that word, by the way. I love that. And I love fire. I mean, I just love the title Fire Forte. And I think you're doing a marvellous thing, as I as I touched upon before. Um, but Forte, like I have this, uh, this, this, this idea and it's going to be something that I'm going to bring to bring to the to the forefront at one in at some point in time when I have have a moment to do so. But I like to tell people, be bold and brave in business and blockchain. 
right? Because if you want to see change, if you want to see social impact, you need to lead from the front. You can't wait for someone else to do it. Now, again, maybe being a leader is not, is not, your, is not your strength, but being a supporter is. Now, to answer your question about how we increase diversity, so um, there's many ways. So first of all, what Albright did, they, they sought out a speaker, a leader like myself, they had a platform, and then by doing that, they, um, people like you were, to, were able to access more information or better um, explanation about blockchain. So to anyone who's listening who has a community or knows someone who has a community, tell them to get, get in touch with, with myself or someone like me. I might not be the person for that community, um, but ultimately there's lots of people who are doing what I'm doing. I mean, I'm not going to say they're doing it better than me <laughs> but, <laughs> impossible <laughs> but what I will say is that I have my style and other people have their style right and so there's that and then of course it's about if you are a leader in this space um or you want to be a leader in this space jump onto the twitter spaces connect with people who are again leading not just to support them but to just get the confidence for you to start leading right and I will tell you this right now, there are so much more women in this space coming into this space, and they are from all walks of life. There's women who are talking about neurodiversity, there are women talking about the LGBTQ, um, I don't remember the rest of the letters, um, uh, communities, um, there's others who are talking about um, indigenous tribes, um, there's people who are doing work around um, uh, Spanish language speakers, French speakers. Do you know what I mean? There's like anything you can think of is being created and, um, and, and people are creating spaces, be it on LinkedIn, be it on, on Twitter. Uh, so they call it crypto Twitter, right? So this is where Twitter spaces is really just becoming alive. Um, and then also LinkedIn has just created uh, audio. Um, so you can do it on LinkedIn if you so wish. Now, I haven't mentioned Facebook much, and there is a reason mm. for this. The reason I haven't I mentioned Facebook, because a lot of people in the crypto, crypto de, not even just crypto, decentralized space, they think Facebook is the devil, right? <laughs> because it's very centralized. They've mm. taken the data. It's like an oxymoron to what decentralization blockchain stands for. So you will find blockchain groups and crypto groups on Facebook, thriving groups. But reality is those who are really hardcore about this space, they think um, Facebook is the, the devil and so they don't utilize it. Um, so I would say that LinkedIn, for me anyway, from a business perspective, is great. But if you're more coming from a, I just want to learn about it as an individual, see how I can make leverage the space, what I can invest in. Maybe I want to purchase an NFT. Maybe I want to purchase crypto. And it's very important to say as well that you need crypto in order to purchase NFTs. So whichever way you look at it, you're always going to go down that crypto route because you need mm. a wallet etc etc now there are some platforms where you can just use cash and use credit card um and more of that is coming again so you don't have to worry about the tech because it is convoluted um but with that being said um ultimately uh twitter twitter or crypto twitter is a good place for individuals to learn but you have to be so mindful which is again why being part of a community to ask the questions and say i saw this what do you think and let me tell you, I have been scammed. I know people who are well respected and well ahead. They have been scammed because there are very bright minds who are using their talents for bad. And if you come into this space, you have to recognize and understand that you could be scammed. Let me tell you what happened to me very quickly. So I have two NFTs, Boss Beauty NFTs, who are in my wallet on OpenSea, and some mofo went and took my um, people say how I, I can't tell you the details mm. anyway ultimately they took the nfts from my wallet and um i realized about a month or so later and because um i'm in this space i knew who to talk to so i spoke to them and then we launched a case 
um, which basically I took to the high courts of England and Wales. And in doing that, I set a precedent. And that precedent was stating that NFTs are property. So I set that precedent. So I'm, I'm down in like legal history now forever as that person who brought that case to um, the high courts of England and Wales. And as most people who understand law, a case law means that it can be used for other cases as an example mm. to say this set a precedent. So based on this case law, this is this is where we're moving forward on, uh, moving forward from. But the point of what I'm saying here is that I took something that was quite negative, that is quite negative to me, and I'm using it to um, to create recourse for people. So once all of this process has gone through, because I don't know how long it's going to take, because I'm the first one doing this, and ultimately the truth of the matter is, just like in the virtual world, decentralized world, centralized world, um, taking a, a case to court, especially when it's a civil court or civil case rather than a criminal, even though this is a criminal case, if you go to the police station and say, I want to report a crime, and, you, and I explain to them what happened, they're going to be like, well, what does decentralization mean? <laughs> What's yeah. it? It's like, it's going to be like, sorry, we can't do anything about that. We can't even give you a crime reference number because we don't get it. Like, was a crime even committed? To go back to a question you asked 10 years time, five years time, I hope these things will be recognized as a criminal case. I hope that the police will be able to say, oh, I know what an NFT is. And here's your case, your, your crime reference number, you know? And yeah. then because it's being recognized as property, that means you should be able to insure it as mm -hmm. property. And if you can insure it as property and it's stolen, then you should be able to get, you should be able to claim with a crime reference number to say this has been stolen, et cetera, et cetera. And because it's on the blockchain and it's all about transparency, trackability, traceability, the insurance company, and maybe it will be a decentralized insurance company who understands this space rather than a traditional insurance company, they'll be able to go onto the blockchain and they'll be able to say, ah, oh, yes, that makes sense. Uh, Lavinia did have it and this is what happened and it's all on the blockchain. So no one is questioning whether what you're saying is the truth or not because the blockchain is the truth. Well, it's another great way of spinning a negative into a positive because right. how stressful that must have been, how you must have felt so helpless and you've completely spun it around. And again, as you were talking, I was thinking no matter what area of a skill set that you've got or that you're passionate about, you're every example that you're giving demonstrates that there's a need for that to be built in this new technology. And if that is in law, if that is in accessibility, if that is in education, and we've all got areas that we work in at the moment or areas that we're especially passionate about that you'd, I mean, I was listening to one of your podcasts the other day that was about the music producer who was setting up the digital passport. So that would yeah. be, you know, every time your music is played, the royalties go to you and not the, uh, and a whole other topic. Absolutely fascinating and so important that, okay, if you work in the music industry, this technology is so important to you. So uh, amazing story that you've gone and done and that you are changing forging away a, a law basically that's going to be globally and I think as we hear more of those stories more of those examples will come up of different people of totally different backgrounds again talking about just it being a more community-led approach will be working on their own projects and achieving things by the sound and, of it and solving problems or creating solutions to problems. And I just want to end on this point. The reason I shared the short story about NFT is not only, it's, it's to, to give an example to say that I am in this space and this happened to me. This happened to me. Mm -hmm. So you just have to be very, very mindful that if you do come in into this space, there's so many benefits and also personal and professional growth. But there is a downside. Like I said, there's bad actors in this space. And, um, and with that being said, one of the things Women in Blockchain Talks is hoping and looking to create is a legal helpline to give people direction. Because again, we want to create a space and we are creating a space that is supportive, that is um, secure, and that is, I can't remember the other S that I said, supportive, Safe. secure. 
and right. safe. Women in Blockchain Talks is, is your creation. And we've talked about fire and forte and what that means. I'm so curious to understand about how you had the courage, really, to set that up on your own, because I just think it's formidable. Did you have moments of, do you have moments of self-doubt? You know, what kind of led you to, yeah, feel at that point of, right, I'm going to do something on my own? You know what, when you are, it's a good question. And, and, and I can only speak from my truth. And this is my truth. When you are from a diverse background and people, you know, again, traditional centralized world, and this is not the case for everybody, but I, I, I can honestly tell you the stories I've heard for people who look like me and women across the board, but particularly women, I can, you know, again, I, I'm talking my truth, right? Mm -hmm. As a woman of color as a black woman and um there's just been too many doors shut to me you know too many people who, who feel who feel they can tell me what I can be right so sometimes when you, you you just get tired of people telling you what you can be and and like I said this is the reason why so many women are that that that, that data again why so many women are starting their own businesses because they're just like tired of the, the glass ceilings, of the closed doors, the platitudes, but not the support, so to speak. And ultimately, I, I, I don't know, I've like, I have a voice, I just want to use it. And when I started Women in Blockchain Talks, I never knew it would evolve to this. It's, it's, it's grassroots and very organic. Where it's taken me, not just where I've taken it, but where it's taken me, I did not expect that, you know? I've just, I'm a Christian. And when I say I'm a Christian, um, that I'm not, you know, I, I say that in the term of, I believe in God. I have a relationship with God. Um, and for me, that has been a saving thing for me. It's a foundational thing. And I've just been like, God, I'm just trusting you with this, trusting the journey. Some people will say I'm trusting the universe. I choose to say I'm trusting God. And of course, my uncle said God created the universe. So I in trusting the universe, I'm trusting God. And I've just, I just feel like I've been led. I just feel oh. like I've been. But with that being said, I just felt like I'm going to have a better chance of creating the life that I want for myself than in a workplace. You know, life is for the living. I want to look back on my life and just be like, I gave it all that I got. I come from a single parent background. My mom was my inspiration. She passed this year. And, um, you know, she was always ambitious. And But she didn't have the same opportunities as I did. And my grandmother didn't have the same opportunities as I do. So for me, as a woman of colour, I can't sit back. It's just complacency isn't something that, I have the 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 the, the privilege of, of of I have the privilege of being born in the UK, having the education that I have, et cetera, et cetera. But complacency is not something that is just I can I can consume, so to speak, you know. So I think that is what it, you know. I'm a driven person, but I just feel like I need to I need to fulfill my potential, and I need to fulfill that for my mom and my grandmother and generations that came before. So I was interested in your background. You talked earlier about the courage that you had to set up on your own and you sound fearless in it. What was the reality of that? What, what, was, the, what was the first step that you took? Um, well, I think the first step is, um, is mindset. When you start a business, it can take time before you're able to pay yourself, right? Um, and so sometimes you feel like, even when people are like, oh, you're killing it, you're doing so well, Lavinia. And you just think to yourself, well, my events are not selling out. I don't have this amount of money in my bank account or my business bank account. You know, how am I going to pay my team members? How am I going to do this? I'm going to do that. And, you know, it, it's hard. And sometimes you just think, am I ever going to get to that place? But there's an analogy that I love, a couple of analogies. If you keep if you uh, keep chopping at the tree, eventually it will fall. And the mighty oak was once a small acorn. So the key thing is when I talk about mindset, you have to believe in yourself because I always say that you can look at the economy and you could say, "Oh no, it's a bad time." But you know what? Tomorrow is not promised. Number one, and people make money in a bad economy, and people lose money in a good economy. You have to trust, and I touched upon this before, the universe, because in doing that, and, and let me just 
put a cravat there. Sometimes when you have responsibilities with children and stuff like that, you just can't take the risks. But sometimes you find yourself in a situation where there is no alternative but to take the risk. And then mm. it takes you down the road. And, and that road is powerful. You're going to learn. Whatever happens, you're going to learn from it. It's going to help you to become the person that you want to be, meant to be. You know, we always talk about who do you want to be or who do you need to be in order to have the life that you desire. And it doesn't happen overnight. You have to go through a, a you, you've got to forge yourself. Uh, sometimes that, 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 that person who you want to be or to have the lifestyle that you want is forged through the fire. And in order to be forged through the fire, you need to have forte. You need to have belief. And it's got to be strong like an ox. <laughs> that, so, that's very important. I, I, I can't help but say, though, have you, have you, have you forged that over time? Or, oh, yeah. Or is, OK, because is that because, you know, I'm talk, listening to you thinking, yes, you know, vote for Lavinia. But I'm thinking, yeah. where, were you born that way or at what point did that evolve? You know what? I would say that it was always inside of me. I've always had this sort of determined, go-getting, um, inquisitive spirit inside of me. That's what I would say. But I never thought I could be a business person. I didn't think people, you know, I grew up, like I said, I've touched upon before. I grew up in a one parent family. I saw my mom, my auntie, my grandmother struggling. I thought that you needed to have a man in order for you to have some level of success. But the truth of the matter is, and everybody's story is different. I know people whose dads were around and they didn't have a great childhood. They didn't have a great uh, example. I know lots of women who are married and, and they thought they were marrying their, 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 um, their knight in shining armor. And it wasn't, you know, ultimately as human beings, human beings first, we have to save ourselves. It's not other people's um, responsibility to save you, you know, or for them to provide your happiness to. But as I, as I've touched on before, I feel like I haven't had the sort of privilege to just be conventional in a way, because as, as a minority, there's going to be certain challenges that I'm going to face that maybe a non-minority is, or a non-minority that doesn't have the same minority um, attributes that I have don't have to go through so but the, the key thing is is that I think I've always had fire in my belly I was married and I got divorced and I and I know if I'd stayed with that person I wouldn't be the person that I am today and I had to make a decision and that decision was am I going to give my power to that person am I going to lose myself in that person or am I going to try and be the best that I can be you know honor my ancestors and and fulfill my potential as a woman and you know as a as a I, I don't know you not even as a woman as a human being and um and I made that decision and even at that time I was broken mm. I was broken and I just had to take one step at a time which goes back to my analogy again you keep uh, um um you keep putting the hammer to the not the hammer the axe to the tree the tree will eventually fall but if you keep building up yourself and personal development is so key you know who who are you what do you stand for honestly who are you and what do you stand for and what do you want to stand for and if you want to stand for something you have to go for the fire it's as simple mm. as that I mean that sounds as though nobody can avoid pain to get to somewhere really good um, and really great and every uh, when we talk about opportunities at 40 and fire at 40 I, I think that most people will have those stories where maybe things have burnt them a little bit and maybe that gives you the bravery to go after something because I guess 20 year old Lavinia might never have believed she might have had fire in her belly but actually to be running her own business and be traveling globally and inspiring women when we haven't seen that many people do it before us because marriage and settling down to some degree has been the thing that we've seen around us maybe as you know what it society was, does it was sorry to cut you it was the objective 20 year old Lavinia was like I'm going to go to university I was the first one in my family to go to university I'm going to get a, I was the first one in my family to work in the city I was the first one in my family to to work and live abroad I was the first one in my family to to purchase a property you know so I was the first so that was my that was the fire in my belly to do the things that my other people around me hadn't done 
right? So I was the first, but to to move from from that to oh, I'm going to start a business. No way would I, of twenty year old Lavinia, have had that. Just just not being a a, a teen teen um a teen mother getting pregnant at, at at a young age not being in an abusive relationship not getting living in a council flat and 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 having a baby those were the things that I was I was moving away from and so the opposite of that was getting education you know so that was what what Lavinia was aspiring to but then you I got there and I realized that all the things that we've been told aren't actually true it doesn't give you the happiness that you want you know so you I just kept questioning and questioning and questioning not necessarily other people but myself and then 2008 came and everything I'd worked hard for just was wiped up from underneath my feet because 2008 was the economic global crash right and so then that's when I started learning about financial education and really taking personal development and then it was like actually I could be an entrepreneur but that that at that point in time I was like me I didn't believe it and then even to say I was an entrepreneur I was a business owner I felt like a like a what's that uh like a fake and I went through that um that that something syndrome what's oh, the word? imposter um, syndrome imposter syndrome yeah who do I think I am because who did I have to look at around me, you know, who was doing that? So, yeah, you're going to question yourself all the time. But you know what? Question yourself and then believe in yourself. Because if you don't, then no one else will. I still have people around me who try who try it on with me. But it's like, you know what? You're not that important. I need to focus on what I'm focusing on, you know, and the mission. The mission is bigger than me. And like I said, I don't even feel like I chose it. I think it chose me and just like live your life and be happy and just do good do good you are absolutely living you're definitely meant to be doing this and I just think you're going to have so much success I know the impact that you've had on so many people you can see that across so many different areas of uh, social media I can't wait to come to London and actually see that in real life so um yeah really encouraging and so encouraging to hear about self-development as well especially I'll end on a question um that I ask everyone at the end which is looking even further forward so we've talked about 20 year old Lavinia but looking further forward 10 years is what what does the best decade look like for Lavinia Osborne what would be the best thing to happen in 10 years this is going to sound like an oxymoron but I don't think it is but I really would love to meet the love of my life and have children you know like like me have children um like I said I'm at an age where it is more challenging but I've got such huge belief. I'm like, if it's for me, then it won't pass by me. Um, And then with it, so that's on a personal level, you know, to really meet that person who is my person, who's got my back, respects what I'm achieved, what I've achieved and what what I'm doing. Um, Because a lot of people will talk the talk, but it doesn't mean that they actually, you know, have your back. And like I said, be be a mom, have that experience of being pregnant and having a baby, um, babies. <laughs> and um, on a more professional level, or even with Women in Blockchain Talks, hit that 50,000 to see many leaders, female leaders and men and non-binaries come out of Women in Blockchain Talks who are creating, leading from the front, creating impact and opening doors for other people to come into this space. And even if it's not in this space, but just even in the just, you know, um, uh, the centralized traditional space, because a leader is a leader. Right. And some people may not want to do blockchain or come into blockchain, but they want to create a business that's adjacent to blockchain. You know, so I just want to create leaders. I want to see more diversity. I want to see the metaverse thrive and for it to look like the world that we actually live in. And, and, and like I'm not just a, a non an, an anonym, anomaly like. You know, I don't want to be the unique leader who looks like me. I want to see many people who look like me. Mm. And then also, in addition to that, I really want to create like a like a a fund for women in blockchain talks that can then invest in women's businesses, grassroots businesses. I really think starting working from a grassroots, that is if you 
personal development, the best personal development is starting a business and particularly a grassroots business because you have to learn. So you have to develop yourself. And there's, a, there's something that, that, that stuck with me when I was, was right at the beginning of my journey. you got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable, which basically means you're always learning. You're always developing because you need to apply these skills to your business so it can grow, you know? So I walk my talk. No one can ever say, oh, well, you had this, you had that investment. No, I started it from scratch by myself. And yes, off the back of my own energy, I've got people coming in now who want to help, who want to support. So yes, I do have a team, but I started from scratch. And it's not easy, but it's worth it. That's amazing. I can see 10 years of being, of you actually, uh, lots of spin-offs, lots of leaders who have actually created their own businesses and want to walk your walk in the way that you have. Um, so I was going to say fingers crossed, but I feel as though actually it's been put that out there in the universe now. So I'm going to catch up with you in 10 years and um, see how many children you've got in the background. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's uh, and the fund as well just absolutely brilliant so um yeah. thank you so much I mean if anyone can represent fire and forte I genuinely think it's you and uh we've talked about lots of um resources including what blockchain means to me which I think is your ebook that you reference so I'm going to add a bunch of links um to women in blockchain talks community etc so um we can uh, so I'll add those to the to the podcast and to the notes on youtube so thank you so much thank you thank you so much <laughs> take care hopefully see you in london one day <laughs> <laughs>